Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Finding Strength. Uh, I'm here with Will Kenzel of Low Country Strength down in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, just, we just started finished with some deadlifts and some back work. Uh, how are you doing today? Good, Congratulations, buddy. by the way, you just had a daughter. Thank you. Uh, was that two days ago? Two, two days, days ago. Two days ago. She's two days old. Yeah, so. Two and a half year old and a two day old. How, how's the sleep going? Uh, no. Not good. Not yet. <laughs> It'll get better. It always does. Yeah. Not yet, though. <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about the, the gym and kind of history of uh, how this came to be. All right. Um, I couldn't even tell you a time frame. A little over 10 years ago, I started out in my garage. Huh. Um, just me and a rack, and that was it. Slowly built to the rack that I have now um, in a warehouse facility. And that was probably eight years, moved into a warehouse. Six years ago, five, six years ago, moved into the space that we're in now. So I'm located in Charleston Croft Maga. It's a mixed martial arts studio. And, um, you know, ever since then, keep buying a little bit more, building a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, so how big of a team do you have going right now? I just saw you have a big board over there with records and everything. We do. Um, we had a nice little in-house meet this past weekend. Um, just got everybody together. I call them, you know, fun days or family family meetings. Yeah. <laughs> and we had almost 30 people show up. So a few from out of town, but um, all the ones in-house would say we have around 20 people. Nice. And so do you do the programming for all them? I do. I do. I do all the programming. Um, you can always look at it. It's on lowcountrystream.com. Okay. Um, and so from there, everybody kind of asks questions. They, the template is up, yeah. but everybody else gets something a little individual. Okay. So what is uh, the basic kind of concept, kind of your training philosophy? Um, it's evolved over the years, but the biggest philosophy I follow right now is Brian Carroll's 1020 Life. Yeah. Um, I love the deload philosophy. Um, the thing that I preach to most of my lifters is that we do this for fun. Yeah. You know, training is not making money for us. Yeah. So everybody that's here is you know, really concentrated on staying injury free. Yeah. So we pay attention to the things that we do and everything to be the healthiest that we can be. If we get strong along the way, that's great. Yeah. But you know, it's more more for fun and health than anything. Yeah, it's actually been a kind of a common theme with the past couple of coaches I've talked to is yeah. slowing down, taking the time to actually build that base and move on without you know, getting rid of the ego and actually getting strong and not yeah. hurting yourself. And uh, I have the medical bills to say it sucks. And, uh, so you've been here for about six years, you said. Kind of yep. what are your plans moving forward? Um, the idea initially will be to kind of keep building with where we are. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have a team of about 30 or 40, um, a team that actually compete. Yeah. So we've got the space and the facility here to be able to do that. Um, the location where we are is great. You know, we've got a lot of people from all over that can kind of get here pretty easily. So at some point, the idea will be to have a few more trainers on staff. Mm -hmm. But for right now, you know, I just am looking at trying to get more people on a powerful team. Awesome. So speaking of how did you get involved with powerlifting? Um, years ago, I just finished my my second bodybuilding show and found out about South Carolina Barbell. Uh -huh. um, went up to uh, introduce myself to Mark Bartley and he promptly starts making fun of my shaved arms. <laughs> he thought that was great. It's funny since he's recently, he's actually is competing in bodybuilding now. Um, so but you, it, give, you give him shit for that now? Or? Oh, of course, yeah. of course, you got to, right? You got to return that. Yeah. Um, he got me in interested in it, um, he invited me up, I trained in South Carolina Barbell for a long long time, I go up every weekend, every other weekend, really, you know, got super interested when I saw everything that they were doing, mm -hmm. really got into gear, um, I, I will admit I jumped into gear lifting too soon, Yeah. Um, and so the rule that I have for most of my lifters here in low country strength, you have to do two raw meets before I let you get in gear. Yeah. And so then that way, I at least know you've got that base so you don't make the same mistake I did. How many times did you compete before you got into gear? Oh, no, I was straight oh, into gear. Straight into yeah, gear? Yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's completely my mistake. I went straight in, straight into multiply my very first meet. <laughs> <laughs> have, uh, 
have you competed raw since? No. 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 no you ever no, plan no. on it? <laughs> the, the the thought has crossed my mind just yeah. for how easy it looks. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, but I, I love my gear lifting. No, I can't. I can't imagine not. No, doing it that. is nice when you just kind of lift, <laughs> and then you sit down. Yeah. And they call for your next lift. You go. All right, yeah. Okay. All right. You just pull your knee sleeves up. You know, and that's exactly. it. You know, you're not like sitting there going. Oh, all right. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice just to have a donut and relax in between each lift. Yeah. No, I, I, don't, I have no idea what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you get along with the uh, all the fighters here? I noticed there's a lot of fighters when I came in. And yeah, um, I, you, you met you know two of them. Yeah. You know, Nate and Raph. I mean, the guys here are amazing. Yeah. Um, Matt, who owns the place, who owns the mixed martial arts, he does an amazing job. And the guys that come in, you know, are great, super nice. The structures are amazing. We just really can't ask for a better cohesiveness that we have here. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, it's awesome. And uh, <clears throat> so when somebody does come in and they want to join the powerlifting team, kind of what's the route that they have to take? So we're kind of selective. We're a little yeah. bit more of a closed yeah. type membership. Um, anybody's welcome to. I don't give a shit about numbers or anything like that. Um, and I've run through guys that have competed before, run through the same thing. Your first initial... Um, month here, it's a hundred dollars. Okay. What that does, in and of itself, that kind of filters people out, whether yeah. I know they want to be here or not. Um, but that includes three sessions with me, because I've got to work with you to yeah. know that you actually legitimately know what you're talking about. Yeah. So after that, you know, it's forty bucks a month. They come in. Um, whether you train as part of the team or not, you could definitely get more help if you do. Yeah. I don't require that you follow the programming that I do. You will definitely get more help if you do. Um, but at the same time, I always, you know, warn people that, you know, I do run the option of running you off something if my guys need it and you're not following our program. Yeah, that makes sense. And so it's kind of how many people do you get in here versus how many people do you actually retain? Um, it's interesting. Probably, you know, one out of every two people that come through the door will stay. Okay. Because usually, because we don't do much advertising, yeah. so if you find me already, you're kind of on... You know, you know what's going on. Yeah, uh, you know, they, and then they were looking for you. Yeah, exactly. So if they're looking for me, they know what's up. You know, if the if they balk at the at the price, yeah, I can understand that. But then at the same time, it's like you know, if you're committed, it, you'll find a way. Yeah. So, and how long have you been coaching then? So, I've been coaching for probably really consistently for about five to six years. Okay. You know, my team here. Yeah. Uh, and so since you went from athlete to coach, I mean you're still an athlete, but since you've taken that role, <laughs> kind of what lessons that somebody out there watching this would like to know that you've learned that you would try to... It, it's really tough to differentiate. Yeah. So the one thing that I do is I reach out and have someone else coach me. Yeah. I can't coach myself. I'm horrible at it. Yeah. You yeah, know, so cool. even, even if I don't have somebody who's you know, directly over my coaching, sending me a program. I send my program out to several, four, three, you know, several of my teammates. Be like, hey, what do you think of this? Yeah. You know, they're like, hey, you're gonna, you're an <laughs> idiot. You know, or it's like, hey, I like where you're progressing with this. Go yeah. roll with it. The the problem is, in you know, being an athlete and a coach, I can't do the same meets that my athletes do. Yeah. So I've just found I can't compete and be a coach at the same time. Yeah. My. Um, Patience generally tends to wear a little thin on meat day, and so I don't want that to rub off on them. Yeah, that um, makes, makes sense. So that's the thing is so I would generally still train with my guys as if I'm getting ready to do the meat with them, mm. um, and I would try to pick a meat this decently close in time frame. Yeah. And so then that way I'll take one or two of guys with me and be like, hey, we all handle me. You know, and I'll I show up on meat day if I'm handling my guys. I'm a bitch. Yeah. I do everything for my folks. I call their numbers. You know, I wrap their knees, and I do everything possible to make sure that they have the best experience possible. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so how? I guess you're big on accountability. Then when it comes down to time to train, you're like, hey, where the hell are you? Yes. And, yes. Um, I, I will ride somebody's ass, yeah. you know, and I really do expect a lot of my lifters. And I've told several folks, you know, I, I am hard on you because I expect more out of you. Yeah. It's not because I don't like you. Yeah. If I didn't like you, I would just tell you to go home. Exactly. You yeah. know, I'm pretty straight up about that. But, you know, for those that I do like and those that I really see a lot of potential in, I will ride their ass. Yeah. And, if, and, they, and I'm very fortunate that the guys that I do 
if all on the occasions that I've wanted to risen to the occasion. It's true. I mean, you're not going to squeeze blood out of a rock. No. You'll no. definitely squeeze a lot of juice out of an orange because it's got that potential, so you might as well squeeze the shit out of it. Yeah. Well, and, and I will always tell folks, too, I have more confidence in you than you do. Yeah. If I see it, I know that it's there. You may not believe it, but I will. Yeah. And that's the one thing as to why I will really, like you said, really push that squeeze just so I can get the most out of you. Mm-hmm. So then that way you're aware of your potential. Awesome. Uh, somebody wanted to come and train here, kind of how could they get in touch with you? Um, Facebook's the easiest way. Um, I'm on Instagram, LC Strength. Uh, Facebook, Will Kenzel, you know, just look me up, please. Low Country Strength is on Facebook as well. Um, also, too, through the website, I think my information is on the website. It's uh, lowcountrystrength.com. All right, awesome. I appreciate the time. Yeah, man. Thank Good you. Good training with you. Yeah. And uh, tune in, stay, uh, look out for the next episodes. Check for all the information below. Please visit the sponsors, trainstrongman.com, leadfts.com, and hatebrandgoods.com. And I'll see you guys out on the road. Thanks.